good afternoon girls today we'll be starting up with the next topic of gas chromatography that is detectors of the gas chromatography what are the different types of detectors used in gas chromatography how they work <coughs> what all different compounds can be analyzed by them so girls like totally you can use the like flame ionization detector electron capture detector flame photometric detector mass spectrophotometer <coughs> nitrogen phosphorus detector uh, fourier uh, <coughs> uh, rap uh, this uh, fourier red uh, infrared spectrometer all this they can be used as detectors of gas chromatography so let us start up with the flame ionization detector or else it is also called as fid <clears throat> so this is the diagrammatic representation of flame ionization detector first we'll see how it works so a mixture of hydrogen and air is passed into the detector so <clears throat> here we are mixing hydrogen and air and we are passing it to the detector and here a flame is generated and this is acting as one electrode and you have one more electrode made up of either brass or platinum wire and it is mounted to the mounted near the flame tip so what happens suppose whenever you are having hydrocarbons or organic compounds in your sample and that samples when they are coming out of the column they are when they are eluting out of the column they are ionized because of the presence of flame they are ionized and whenever there is increased uh, increase in the amount of ions what happens the intensity of flame is increased the intensity of flame is increased and this intensity the increase in the intensity of the flame is being recorded by the recorder and this is the principle on which our flame ionization detector works and it is used for almost all organic compounds so let us see over here from here what is happening hydrogen is being supplied from this inlet air is being supplied both of them are mixing and a flame is produced over here from this point carrier gas will carry the eluents along with it and suppose if they are having <coughs> the hydrocarbons in it what happens in the presence of flame they are ionized and the intensity of the flame is increased which will you know <coughs> what happens which is being detected by the detector and it is producing a signal so this is how our flame ionization detector works now let us come to our second detector so our second detector is nitrogen phosphorus detector nitrogen phosphorus detector here also it is using hydrogen or air or hydrogen air flame and what happens through this hydrogen or air flame the sample is passed and it uses a rubidium or sodium salt crystal it is using this rubidium or cesium bead and this is heated up by the presence of a coil it is heated up by the presence of a coil and this has a good select it is very selective so it is only useful for the nitrogen and phosphorus containing components it will not give proper results for other uh, components so it is very very selective for nitrogen and phosphorus containing components and when a component has a nitrogen or phosphorus and when it is eluting out of the column along with the carrier gas you know what happens it is adsorbed on the bead surface adsorption is a surface phenomena so it is adsorbing on the surface so what happens when this <coughs> nitrogen or phosphorus it is partially you know partly ionized so what happens it will increase the emission of electrons because of that partly ionized you know nitrogen or phosphorus containing compound what happens the emission of electrons is increased so whenever this emission of electrons is increased it is detected by the detector it is used in the analysis of mainly organophosphorus pesticides you know whenever you are having agricultural samples when you want to analyze organophosphorus pesticides content you can go for 
nitrogen phosphorus detector so here we'll see the <coughs> thing again so from here hydrogen is pumped in and from this inlet air is pumped and a flame is generated you have a rubidium or <coughs> salt a sodium salt crystal or cesium salt crystal over here what happens over here <coughs> from this carrier gas is pumped into it it is having all the eluent suppose if they have nitrogen and phosphorus what happens in the presence of flame they are partly ionized and they get adsorbed on this crystal so as a result there is increase in the emission of electrons which is being and because of that what happens the intensity of increased electrons is detected by the detector but it is very very selective and it works better for the you know nitrogen and phosphorus derivatives and it is used in the analysis of organophosphorus pesticides now the you know the third type of detector is a electron capture detector till now we have seen only the emission of electrons from this detector what happens we will observe the you know <coughs> a, a capture of electron so electron capture detector it is used in the detection of analytes which are in need of electrons you know which are in need of electrons so what which are which uh, are in need of electrons mostly the electronegative elements like you know halogen so it is used in the analysis of halogen containing components so which contain halogens so suppose if you take pesticides like you know ddt bhc aldrin etc they are all rich in this halogens chlorine so it is used in the detection of polychlorinated compounds so ecd is mainly based on the fact that you know there are few analytes which are in need of electrons they will capture the electrons so it is used in the analysis of substances which capture electrons so mainly halogens they will capture the being electronegative they are in need of electrons so <coughs> electron capture detector is used in the detection of polychlorinated compounds and you have pesticides like ddt bhc aldrin etc and this ecd is very very helpful in the analysis of these pesticides and what happens over here we are using a radioactive material for example nickel 63 why we are using that radioactive source because this radioactive material ionizes the carrier gas or carrier gas it is ionizing the carrier gas and what happens as a result there is release of electrons so ionization of carrier gas by the radioactive source will give us free electrons now what happens whenever this free electrons are released it is generating a current because of the release of free electrons the current is generated and whenever you are having ionization of a carrier gas carrier gas what happens electrons are released these electrons give current whenever a proper voltage is applied across the electrode so when an electron accepting analyte you know it eludes out of the column along with the carrier gas what happens it will take up that electrons or this free electrons are captured so what happens there is a decrease in the current flow there is a decrease in the current flow the amount of current goes down so this change is recorded and detected this is our electron capture detector so this is the nickel source so what happens over here this is from column that means whatever eluents are coming from eludes are coming out from the column along with the carrier gas are flowing through this detector and this is our radioactive source so 
what happens whenever this carrier gas is coming over here it is ionizing the free carrier gas and electrons are released so whenever there is electrons they you know there is generation of electricity across the electrodes whenever a proper voltage is applied but what happens if there are halogenated compounds or electron capturing substances the amount of current is decreased why because the electrons are being free electrons are being captured by the halogenated substances or electron capturing substances so the current goes down this is being detected by the detector so now the fourth detector what we are going to study is flame photometric detector this flame photometric detector is very very helpful in the analysis of phosphorus and sulfur containing analyte so this is again a specific detector which is helpful in the detection of phosphorus and sulfur containing analytes so how it works is whenever you have sulfur and phosphorus containing analytes they will emit light whenever they are burned in flame ionization type of detectors and whatever light is produced is detected and it is amplified through an amplifier and we will get a signal for that so flame photometric detector is again a selective or specific detector and it is used in the analysis of phosphorus and sulfur containing analyte so it is working on the principle that sulfur and phosphorus containing substances they will emit light whenever they are you know exposed to a you know flame in a flame ionization type of detector and whatever light is produced is detected and amplified and usually the fertilizer samples you know uh, all those containing sulfur and phosphorus can be easily analyzed by this type of detector now the sec you know <clears throat> next detector is rapid scanning fourier transform infrared spectrophotometer so usually ir gives us the information about the functional groups present in an analyte so here rapid scanning fourier transform infrared spectrophotometer gives us the ir spectrum of the elutes coming out of the column and even they will help in the structural elucidation and also they will give us the quantitative information about the analyte so it is a very very reliable detector it gives us the ir spectrum of the elutes and also it can give us structural and quantitative information about the analyte and the it can detect even very very minute amount of sample small amount of sample also can be analyzed by using this rapid scanning fourier transform infrared spectrophotometer now the last detector is mass spectrophotometer whenever you are connecting gc to a mass spectrophotometer it is a very very advanced technique it is a very advanced technique it is a hyphenated technique you know you are con con you know connecting gc with ms by an interface so gcms is a very very advanced technique and it's a conjugated technique it gives us the mass spectrum of the analyte it, it you know whenever you are using mass spectrophotometer as a detector it is giving us the mass spectrum of the analyte complete picture of the analyte so that we can find the structural information analytes can be analyzed by using mass spectrophotometer detector in two ways one is by taking total ion current you know the total ion generated by the you know total current generated by the all the ions present in the sample so it is non selective whereas analytes they can be selected by using one more technique called as sim or selected ion monitoring but it is very specific and selective so mass spectrophotometer is a universal detector it helps in the you know it helps to us to find out the mass spectrum of the sample and also it gives us the information about the structure of the analyte present and analytes can be analyzed in two different ways one is by you know uh, measuring the total ion current 
generated by all the ions present in the sample which is a non selective method whereas you have one more method called as selected ion monitoring or else the technique is called as sim and it is very specific you can measure the ion generated by a specific ion